You are all here to represent my interests, but you have come up with absolutely nothing. If this case goes forward to trial, then all her plans will crumble to dust. We'll be outcasts. Why punish Mrs. Russell? She has come from nothing. She's tenacious. I'll give her that. A smile and take it as a compliment. It is a compliment. I think I know what I intend to say to Mr. Riggs. It's time to take matters into our own hands. He's hiding something. If he is, he's not the only one. Is he, Miss Scott? What about your story? It's so terrible. What's to be done, Miss Scott? The lighting of the Times building for us is sort of a big moment in the season. The world is changing and all of these people are a part of it. It's another one of those moments in the show that shows the history of New York and really in the history of the world that things are changing. This was a moment of huge transition as the nation really sort of wrestled with reuniting itself across southern and northern borders. And on the other side of that, it was also a moment of great promise, of excitement, of transformation, a moment in which technology transformed the nation, a moment in which people could travel with greater ease, eventually could walk into a room and turn on a, a light switch. Electricity had been around for a long time, but what changed is that at this moment in time, it was beginning to be harnessed. And it was such a monumental event that people turned out to see the lighting of a building because they actually didn't know exactly what that meant. American ingenuity was producing so many new things that aside from making life easier for so many people and cheaper and things can be done faster and in higher quantities, it created wealth faster than had happened before. And it also created a kind of democratization of how people lived. We are taking a step forward into our shared future helped by the new technology, which makes what would have been quite impossible for our parents, only too possible. There was a piece of research from a World's Fair right around that time, and there was, somebody wrote in their diary, when the building lit up, it was like God himself had come down to touch this building such that the light was the brightest thing they had ever witnessed in their entire life. When we read this, almost got chills, because it was hard to imagine that a mere 140 years ago, you had gaslight, you had candlelight, and that was it. It's an absolutely fascinating era where there was both technological advance, industrial advance. It was an extraordinarily vibrant time, and it's an American story. It's part of your story and part of your heritage. This is a turning point in history, Mrs. Russell, but are we headed in the right direction? We don't have a choice in the matter, Mr. McAllister. We must go where history takes us. Agnes gets really fired up with the discovery that Oscar had an affair with the maid, and she's convinced of it. It just brings Agnes to a standstill. I want her sacked. I want her out on her ear by tomorrow night. She's very caring of her reputation, of her standing. It's a huge betrayal on both their parts. She's a very controlling woman. She feels she has to control this world. You will go and see Mrs. Russell. What right have I to ask a woman to fire her own servant? Bertha agrees to fire Turner, which is kind of a big moment. You're to dismiss Turner. Wasn't it strange? Mrs. Van Ryn thinks she's been having an affair. How does she know? I think the culprit must be her son. I'm not completely sure, but that's what I suspect. But I think it kind of speaks to Bertha. She is a very smart woman, and she also kind of senses things about the house. As the leader of the house, when she saw Turner with Larry, perhaps the slightest bit of inappropriate behavior, something went off in her, and she said, you know what, maybe I will do this. We don't get on as we used to. Like all employers, you set the tone. See what I mean? As history will tell you, you know, men built this company and they built the, the railroads and they were presidents and they did all these things. But in society, the woman really ran the house and it was her domain. As you see with George, with all but a few things, you tread lightly and you are along for the ride. I like your spirit. We won't be defeated, George. 
I think Larry has grown up with quite a creative mind and he comes into conflict with what he's expected to do and taking over his father's empire and business. He really has to stand up for what he believes in and who he wants to become, not just to live in his father's shadow. I'd like to be an architect. I don't understand you, what? I think the relationship that George has with his children is different from the relationship that Bertha has with her children. George just, you know, wants his kids to be happy. And I think that's really fundamentally it. And I think ultimately that drives George's relationship with Larry as well. Father, you're a genius. What chance do you think I have of equaling that if I follow in your footsteps? Well, I must always be the disappointing son of a great man. The poor second act, the failure. Larry really won't be happy if he's um, following George into the business. And I think George, when they're alone, George sees that, and that, I think, gives him pause. Larry's definitely aiming for his father's respect. If his father really doesn't approve, then he risks being cut out. So the stakes of, of really standing up for himself are very high, but very important to him. I wish you luck, really. And I wish you luck. I wish you would.